Hi, my name is Tony Caruso, and I am the CEO and founder of the Academy for Speakers. I have spent the past 30 plus years as an event producer, and I have been producing events throughout the country. And one thing that I find is that speakers do not understand the business of speaking. So I've taken upon myself to start teaching speakers the things they need to know so that they can maximize their impact when they step on a stage. They can monetize their message and they can create a huge community of raving fans. And isn't that what we all want? So I'm gonna share my screen right now and I'm gonna just share with you some tips that are going to make it a lot easier for you to maximize those stages that you get on and to make sure that you get all the money that's due to you when you are speaking on stages. So let's get started. First of all, you need to know there are people that are waiting to hear your message. Whether you know it or not, there are people that are searching you out right now. They wanna hear what you have to say because they need you and they need your message. But you won't know who those people are unless you really know who your ideal client is. Are they C-suite executives? Are they tech experts? Are they millennials? Are they moms? Are they singles? Are they men only or are they women only? You need to figure out who exactly is your ideal client. And here's a hint, somebody just like you, you are usually your ideal client. So you need to make sure not only you know who they are, but you know where they're hanging out. Are they on Facebook? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Instagram? You need to know what groups are out there that you need to be in and you need to be hanging out in these places. Are you on Clubhouse? If you're not, get on Clubhouse. It is simple, it's easy, and it's a great way to connect with people. And then of course there's Twitter. Are your, um, are your clients more politically minded, news minded? That tends to be more your Twitterverse. So you need to find out, is that where they're hanging out? You can't hang out everywhere. So choose two, choose the main two that you think are perfect for where your clients are hanging out. And then you go there and engage with them. I'm not just talking friend them. I'm not saying like and love their little posts. I'm saying comment, engage, ask them questions, get to know them, find the groups, um, engage with the group. Don't go in there trying to sell your products and your services. Just go in there just to give education and support and they will notice you and then they will wanna know about more about you. So, like I said, are you on those platforms at well, as well? If not, you need to fall in love with those platforms. It may not be where your friends hang out, but if it's where your clients are, that's where you need to be. Now let's talk about how you show up. Now you know who your ideal client is, but are people going to understand that you are the perfect speaker for their audience of your ideal clients, right? So you need to show up prepared. You need to have that one sheet, that speaker one sheet that captures everything that you know, shows that you are the expert in your field. If you don't have a one sheet right now, you need to make one and you can make it yourself. It, it's not that difficult, but if you have a graphic designer, have them put it together. It looks a little more professional. But what do you need on that one sheet? You need a bio, a short bio telling them your background and who you are and why you are the expert in the fields that you're talking about. Don't talk about awards and all these things that you've earned over time. Why are you the person to talk about your subject? Why am I talking about speakers? Because I'm an event producer and I have dealt with great speakers and I've dealt with some not so great speakers. And I know that I can help speakers be great speakers so they get asked back again and again because I have the background and the knowledge and the expertise, understand? So you have to figure out what that is for you. Also, do you have an updated headshot? 2016 was my very first professional headshot and I love that headshot. It changed my life. I was like, oh my God, I look pretty. But in reality, I used that headshot for three years till people said to me, Tony, that's a really pretty picture, but 
it's not you anymore. You need something updated. So in 2019, I took new headshots. In 2020, I took some social media shots. Every year, you should be taking some updated picture. I'm having my picture stand in six months again. So in 2021, I'll have new pictures. Because if I hire you to speak on my stage and you've shown me what you look like, you better show up as that same person, not someone 20 years older. Do you understand? Because I'm promoting you, I'm promoting you with that picture. And if you step on my stage, you've lost credibility. People are looking at the binder going, well, that's not the same person that's supposed to be there. It just shows that you don't tell the truth. So be truthful. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter. You gain 10 pounds. If you're waiting to be perfect, you know, you'll never be perfect. You need to get done. So go out and have a professional shot done. Have your hair and makeup done. You feel really good about yourself. And then go have it have one really great professional shot to put on that one sheet. Do you have pictures of you speaking on stages? Very important. I want to know, have you spoken on a stage before? You know, have you been on a bigger stage? I'm putting you on a big audience. I want to make sure you can relate to them and engage with them. So it's important that you have those pictures of you on stages. Do you have a signature talk? Something that really engages and is juicy title that everybody's like, ooh, I want to hear more. And do you have it in 20 minutes? Do you have it in 60 minutes? Make sure that you, you have it all laid out. What I say is you block it. You have a 10 minute introduction and background and laying the groundwork for whatever it is you're gonna talk about. And then the other 10 minutes, if it's a 20 minute speech, you're giving three tips. You're not going really deep, but you're giving them really three good tips and then you're closing. If it's 60 minutes, you're giving five tips. You're going deeper. See how you can do that? It can be the same layout, but it just is you're giving different information in the middle. And maybe it's instead of just saying, hey, you need to do your speaker one sheet, you are taking them through the process of it. So you're going a little deeper. What are their takeaways? What is my audience going to take away after you speak on my stage? I want to know that you have actionable tools that they can use when they walk out the room, either in their personal life, professional life, family life, whatever it is, what are they going to take with them? Because that's the things that they're going to come back and go, wow, this is amazing. I can't wait to get started. And you will see that they will come back and see you again and again because you changed their life. Maybe just a little bit, maybe a lot. But if you can do that, then you are golden. Let people know on that one sheet, have you spoken before? And if so, where? What organizations? What groups? What was? What is your ideal client? Tell me on your one sheet, because if my clients are not your ideal clients, you shouldn't be speaking in front of them. It, it's not in alignment with your messaging, and it, the message will just not be clear, concise, and it won't resonate with the audience. And I want my audience to be happy, because in the end, it's not about you. And it's never going to be about you. It's about the audience and how you're making them feel. Um, do you have a video? I hope you do. If you don't, make one. You can do it now in this virtual world. You can pull up your Zoom. You can open it up and you can make a video and you can say, welcome to my event and name your event and just start talking and say, hey, could you put in the chat where you're from? Oh, Colorado, glad you're in the house, Florida. No one sees that. It's not going to be recorded. So don't worry about it, but act as if so that I can see, do you have energy when you're talking? Do you know to look into the camera or are you constantly looking down at your keyboard or at your notes? Are you flumming through? Oh, you've got my phone here. What are you doing? You need to know how to engage with the audience. So if you can do that, virtually and do it well, then I know you can do it on a stage. So sit down and do a video. And the, the great thing about it is you only have to do it once. And if you don't like it, do it again, do it again. No one's going to know. You can spend all day doing it uh, until you get it to where you feel it's right. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Flaws are good in a, 
in a speech. When you make a little mistake, sometimes it shows that you're you're authentic and you're real and you're not this perfect person on stage because people will then see that and go, well, I'm not her. I can't do that. She's so much better than me. You want to show them that, hey, I'm human. And if I can do it, so can you using these three processes. See how that works? Make sure that you are telling people that you're a speaker. Do you have a page on your website that says, book me as a speaker? And on that page, you put your video so people can then see it. Don't make us go places to look. Give it all to us in the beginning. Give us your one sheet. Give us a link to your, to your video. Send us to your page where you have everything on your website, where you've spoken. You can have several different videos of you speaking on that page. The more information you give us, the more professional you look. And we're going to go, oh, okay, yes, she can walk and talk and chew gum. Man, the audience loved her in this event. She's perfect. You want to let help us make the decision. But if we have to go searching for things and looking for things, we're not going to take the time. And you might miss out on that gig. We are vetting you. What do you look like digitally? It's important. Look at your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Instagram. Look at all those. Can Do you pass an inspection? Meaning, are you listed as a speaker on all those platforms? If not, just go in there and change your bio. Is your image aligned with your messaging? Are you showing yourself as this, you know, free spirit and everything, but you talk about negotiating in a corporate setting? It's, it's not going to relate. You can have some things that are frilly and show a little of your personality, but you better show your, your um, business acronym on those pages. We're going to be looking for that. Are you posting only pictures of yourself over and over and over again? That means you're not engaging with people, you're not sharing information, that you have no community. Are you politically um, polarizing? Now, I don't really care who you voted for, but are you gonna come up onto my stage and be political on my stage? Is Are all your posts anti-government or anti whatever the social thing is right now, whatever it is, are you taking a stand in every single one of your posts? Then maybe you can't get on a stage in front of 100, 200, 300 people and just keep to the script. Something could happen politically that day and throw you off and you're going to go off on my stage. I can't have that. There's nothing wrong with being um aware of what's going on in the world and having a statement about it. I'm talking about is every post about that. Is everything a rant? You can't show that part of yourself. I'm sorry. You can have a friend, private group that you can do all that with. Just don't do it on your public page because that's where we're looking. When was the last time you posted? These two people just recently wanted to friend me. One hadn't posted since November 13th, 2018. The other one was December 1st, 2020. I'm not gonna engage with them because they're not engaging their audience. And as an event producer, and I am looking for speakers, I want my speakers to have engaged audience. So they'll say, hey, I'm speaking at the Academy for Speakers event. You should join us. But if nobody's watching or you're not on those social media enough, I'm not gonna waste my time having you on my stage because you haven't built built a community that you can then reach out to. We all want butts and seats. So help us do that. It's very important. And don't be selling. Every post be about selling. Go with the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your posts should be educational, quotes, inspirational, family. 20% you're selling or offering your services of some kind. Just remember that if every single post as I'm swiping down is selling, that means you're going to get on my stage and all you're going to do for 20 minutes is sell me your program. And notice I've been here and it's been 15 minutes and I haven't sold you anything. Those are the kind of people that I want on my stage because they're giving information. They're sharing with my audience. So I have 10 questions and I hope I can get through them in my time. So real quick, Questions you should ask when you are looking to speak on someone's stage. First of all, again, what's the democratic demographics of the audience? 
are they your ideal clients? You don't want to speak where your people are not going to be in the audience. Can I offer from the stage? Really, really, really strategic. Because if you cannot offer from the stage, do not offer from the stage. Because if you do, we'll never ask you back. It's part of your contract. So ask the question. And if you can't offer from the stage, ask if you can give a free gift to the audience where you capture those emails. What's the lineup? Who's before me? Who's after me? What are they selling? What are their uh, topics about? Because if it's three life coaches in a row and you're in the middle, it's, it's the same messaging. You don't wanna be on that stage. Go on a different day perhaps, but you don't wanna be in the lineup where everybody's talking about the same thing. And you also wanna make sure, is there a break after you speak? Because if, if there isn't, you know that's when you close your deals. So if you're up on the stage and say, meet me at my table, I'll be there in an hour for lunch, you know, people might forget. People have questions right away that they want to ask you and you want to be able to answer them. So make sure there's a break after you speak, 10, 15 minutes. What are the deadlines? When do they need your picture, your bio, your topic, your everything? Know what they are and don't miss them. Are there handouts and can you be a part of those handouts? Um, when do you need to get those handouts into to the team? Or can I bring them with me and they're going to hand them out during the event? Just ask the question. Are there other opportunities for me to get more visibility? Will there be a program that I can be a part of? Is there a tote bag virtually or um, live? And can I put something in that tote bag? Are you gonna have any kind of social events, happy hours, breakfast, coffee breaks? that you can then sponsor. There are all kinds of different ways that you can put that into your deals and negotiate that to get more visibility. Maybe they're gonna be doing interviews with the speakers beforehand. Make sure you're available and you know when that's happening because it's a great opportunity for not only you to get promoted on their sites, but you can then say, hey, I wanna use the video and promote it on mine as well. Do they have social media posts and everything for you to just swipe the copy, you put it onto your site and you then promote the fact that you're either sponsoring or you're speaking at this event. We want help in getting the word out. And there's nothing better than a speaker that says, hey, I wanna help promote. We'll love you, we'll fall in love with you and we'll probably use you again and again. And if you can bring people into the room, you will absolutely be speaking on my stage again. Speaking of tickets and bringing people into the room, is there an affiliate link to where you might get a portion of the ticket price in cash back if you sell a ticket? Ask them that. Do tickets come with your speaking? If you're paying to speak, do I get a couple of tickets for my team so that they can be in the room or I can bring a couple of VIPs into the room? Usually they'll say yes because it's more butts in the seats and they want you to have the support and the team that you need to um, make the most of the event. Just ask the question. And finally, is there a virtual swag bag? I talked about the tote bag earlier, but now with virtual, it's a really great thing if there's a virtual swag bag and you have a free gift or a free download, and all you have to do is just send them that link and a little description. You don't have to buy 500 tchotchkes to put into a swag bag. You can just send them the link. It makes it simple, it makes it easy, and it's more visibility because let's say 500 people were scheduled to come to the event and it's virtual event. And we all know people don't show up, only 250 came, but they're gonna send that virtual swag bag out to all 500. So you're hitting 250 people that weren't even in the room to, to see you, but they're gonna go, whoa, what's this? I want in on that. And you might be able to capture their emails and get them into your funnel as well. All right, again, I am under time. Awesome. And my name is Tony Caruso. My company is the Academy for Speakers. You want to know more about me? Just go to the academyforspeakers.com. And thank you so much for listening.